my next guest, he is a professional mixed martial artist with a record of eight wins with one loss. You can catch him in his next bout for PFL at PFL 7 on August 13th. Please welcome onto the show, Alex Martinez. How you doing, Alex? Hey there, I'm doing good. Thank you. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for taking the time and coming on the show, man. I know you're uh, extremely busy, ready, getting ready for a huge fight, which we'll talk about later in the show. How have you been, brother? I've been pretty good, you know, like you say, getting ready for the fight, um, you know, uh, deep in training camp now, three weeks ago, and uh, yeah, so it's like the last stretch of uh, uh, the training camp now, so I'm excited. Yeah, the, the, the home stretch, as people would, would call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely, brother. I'm sure you can't wait. Uh, real quick, before we get started, Alex, I, just, I usually start the show with an introduction, you know, just uh, pretty much giving you a minute to let the audience know who you are. If you could just let the audience know who Alex Martinez is, just so everybody that may not be familiar with you can get some familiarity with you. Perfect. Yeah. I'm well. I'm Alexander Martinez. I'm a professional mixed martial artist. Uh, I fought at the 155 uh, pounds, so I uh, would be the lightweight category. And um, yeah, I'm a professional fighter. I was born in Paraguay, and then I live in Canada now. And uh, yeah, I'm doing this full time. That's not much I can say. What part of, <laughs> what part of Canada? Uh, so I'm living right now in Grand Prairie, Alberta. So okay. it's a small town. Yeah. And I have a couple of friends that live in uh, Manitoba, Canada. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, no kind of the same, but you know, it's, yeah, Alberta is more like uh, we call it the the Texas of Canada in a way. It's very cowboy like. You know, a lot of uh, farming and oil industry. So yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome, brother. Well, let let me ask you this, Alex. Why did you get into MMA? You you've been doing it for a minute pretty darn good at it you know you're eight and one uh why did you why get why did you get into mma um well like you know many people it has nothing to do with uh, uh psychological problems or anything like that i got, actually came down from um I, I was born pretty much into a martial artist family right so for example my dad has been doing taekwondo since i was since before i was born and um when i was born kind of you know my dad became a taekwondo instructor and around five years old, I, you know, I started doing martial arts, which was Taekwondo, and I started in Paraguay. And of course, Paraguay is a country where, you know, we, we really don't see as bullying, but uh, you know, there is a lot of bullying going on pretty much. It's, that's just a way of life down there. And um, it's kind of probably the same in Mexico, you know, tough countries like that, you know, you grow up being kind of like harassed a little bit by the other kids. And you kind of just learn your way around it. You need to defend yourself so you learn martial arts. So I got into martial arts at such a young age. Kind of was born into it, like I said. And then when I moved to Canada, I had no idea what to do with my life. I didn't want to be anything else. I didn't want to be a lawyer, a doctor, or anything like that. Um, so it kind of, I kind of just wanted to be a professional uh, kickboxer, actually. I wanted to be a professional kickboxer first. And um, I was looking for a gym. All of a sudden, I saw this gym that was offering MMA. I gave it a try. And then I... So a highlight from Anderson Silva, and I was like, you know, this is what I want to do for a living. You know, I want to be this. So Anderson Silva was like my inspiration. So then um, I went and tried out. I did MMA. I fell in love with it. Then uh, I came back home. I told my dad, dad, this is what I want to do. My dad told me pretty much, uh, you know, this is a tough sport. You know, it's not for you. You should probably look for something else. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a hard career, he told me. And then... I kind of just really wanted to do it. So I kept pushing, I kept doing it, and I kept showing commitment. So my dad kind of just decided to jump on board and uh, helping me out with it. So I've been uh, doing MMA since then. So that was around 19 years old when um, when I went full into MMA. Dang, that's, that's such a crazy journey. Give me one second here. It's a long journey. Because <laughs> we're, we're, you're cutting in and out in one second here. Okay, yeah, no worries. So your, so your dad jumped on board and helped you with MMA. Now, I believe uh, through following your career, Alex, I mean, he's, he's been a part of it, correct? I see. I, That's I, right. I believe I've seen him in your corner and stuff and helping you on there. How big is that to have uh, such a support from your father? Is Does it add more pressure or is it something that to you, I mean, it's, it's fine either way. You were so determined that you were going to do this that you didn't care what happened. Yeah, well, at first, you know, like uh, I was so determined that, uh, you know, I just went for it. And then, um, of course, once I kind of got his blessing in a way and he coming over to help me out was a uh, bigger, how you say, uh, a lot of pressure went off the, the gate because now I don't have to fight with my parents and with the fighting world again. It's kind of like, OK, well, now I got the support from my parents and as well, you know, now I just I just have to fight against one thing, which is the fighting world. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it's amazing. I love it. Like, I don't know any other type of relationship between a father and a son for me this is the only relationship that i see and that i know 
So people ask me, how is the relationship? You know, it must be, it must be different. But for me, you know, that's all I know. You know, so for me, it's, yeah, I love it, man. You know, it's a uh, uh, huge props to him. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for him. He puts a lot of time in me. You know, he sometimes uh, texts me and he's like, hey, wanna come train? And I'm like, sure, let's go. <laughs> so he kind of pushes me, and it's awesome to have that because you know, um, even when sometimes, uh, let's say, I didn't have a they plan to train. He kind of just sends me a message, and you know, I love training, so I take the the occasion anytime. So it's uh, I don't know, I love it, man. It's uh, such a awesome relationship, and I love it. So now, Alex, did your dad have a background in uh, mixed martial arts or a certain kind of uh, martial art there? Yeah, well, my dad and his brother actually. So they did not do MMA specifically, but. Um, they actually used to be, you know, old school martial artists. So uh, they, they grew up into Taekwondo and they both were doing Taekwondo. But, you know, so Taekwondo, when we say Taekwondo, people think of uh, the traditional Taekwondo of uh, where you go and kind of like just kick a lot. Of course. Um, taekwondo is really a martial arts, right? A martial arts. So it means that, uh, you know, it teaches self-defense, it teaches all the stuff. My dad actually used to train the special forces that in... in um, okay. Uh, in a small town in, in Paraguay, so we have a little special forces down there that kind of just specified on, on kind of like anti-drop uh, trafficking and stuff like that. So, you know, there are they're special forces for, for that area. And um, so my dad used to teach those guys kind of like, you know, how to pretty much like uh, the self-defense aspect of fighting. And um, so did my ankle. So my ankle and my dad, when they grew up, they kind of just grew up as a martial artist and they used to go and test and stuff, you know, they used to go and challenge other martial artists. So in a way it was almost kind of like MMA, but in like a, uh, just with no showcase and no people watching, right? But um, uh, he had a lot of background in other stuff. Now Taekwondo was his main thing always. That's great, man. Now, Alex, look, I know I've, I've always asked this question to a lot of fighters, right? Like, oh, how was the pandemic for you? And look, plain and simple, the pandemic is rough, right? I mean, you're in a full contact sport. But my question to you is, what was your reaction when all these, you know, when the pandemic started going, like when it started beginning and you started seeing people with masks and then you kind of started realizing that you couldn't be so close to people. What was your initial reaction to that? And how did you handle that as a fighter? Man, I'll be honest to you, you know, when that first came, you know, of course, it's all the panicking going on. But you know, I was getting ready to fight to go in Brazil and fight for Brave uh, at the time. So I was supposed to go down to Brazil in March. I think it was March 28th. And then, of course, one week before, I'm kind of getting ready. I'm ready. I'm, uh, my weight is low. I'm, I'm ready to go fight. They send a message saying, hey, you know, like, there's a pandemic going on. Pretty much uh, um, borders are closing. That's when everything is kind of, like, going down. Yeah. So, like, borders starting to close, all the things going down. Um, you know, all of a sudden, everybody got to isolate. You know, and in Canada, the isolation was almost too long, I think. Um, I'll be honest to you, you know, it was a shock, you know, it, it felt weird. Everybody went through that, like, what the heck is going on, you know, like uh, a phase. But, man, I was doing my same life. I got up every single day. I went for my run like everybody else. I got a job. I went like, well, I'm not going to sit down here. So I went and got a, a, a job. So I got a job to keep on making money. So I was like, I'm not going to sit down and sit, wait around till this pandemic go away. So um, I saw it's an opportunity, to be honest, you know. So I kept training. Um now, deeper into the pandemic, it's, things started to become harder. There was no fights going on. Um, I was like, okay, I, I quit my job at the time because I was like, well, I cannot keep working on a job because I need to focus on fighting if I want to keep being a full time. And um, so deeper into the pandemic, I'm talking about October, things started to become harder. There is no fights coming around. I'm like, okay, well, I just quit my job because I'm, I, want, I want to fully focus on fighting. And there is no fights. And that's when things started to come a little bit tougher psychologically for me. I'm like, well, I'm not sure if I can keep doing this anymore because financially I'm not being uh, taken care of by this sport. So I'm like, you know what? Good chance I might not keep pursuing this. And I told me that, I said, Dad, I don't think I'm going to keep doing this anymore because I'm still so young and I want to actually have a good life in the future and I want to create something. And my dad's like, well, hold on, he said. Hold on, we'll do something. And then I actually ended up signing up with Ruby Sports, which is uh, uh, such an amazing step that I took in my career. And that's, that kind of set me up for everything else after Right away, we got a fight for December. We were supposed to fight for Contender Series first, and then uh, that couldn't happen because I didn't have visa to come into the U.S. No. Um, so then it's just part of life. And then um, I ended up going to Mexico instead and fought in Mexico. And after that, yeah, after that, 
kind of was just waiting for the big call and then uh, PFL calling. So, so yeah. Sound a lot happy. I'm happy with that. You know, it just it sucks, man. You know, the pandemic. Obviously, you know, you lose some sort of opportunities. Part of life. A hundred percent agreed. It would have been nice, though, right? It would have been nice if we would have got on the contender series and show and showcase your skills, which you're a very skilled athlete. But life happens. You live and learn. You got PFL now. How how's your experience with PFL been for you? Man, it's been amazing so far. You know, like of course, it's been such a roller coaster for me. Like it's all over the place. Um, I mean, going from I was actually in a, in a trip with my wife um, because there was nothing coming for me. I was I was ready to fight since Jan after my fight. I took kind of like January. I was just training. I wasn't doing much. And then February, I was going at it again. So I was like, you know, good chance they're gonna call me right away. So February, and then all the way down till pretty much the end of March, I was kind of like, okay, what's going on? You know, like uh, uh, there's nothing coming. There's no fights offers. What's going on? So I, me and my wife went, took a trip and went down to Vancouver. And we just like, uh, in an RV, right? So we just went and kind of like adventure out and had fun. And during that situation, um, PFL reached out and said, hey, do you, would you like to be an alternate? So that was one week before a bubble for the PFL. So if you did not know, PFL did a bubble for the first season, yeah. which was a 17-day bubble. And then one week before, they asked me if I wanted to be an alternate. And then the first thing I asked is like, well, you know, will my, is my friend Olivia fighting? Because the last thing I wanted was to fight against my friend Olivia, uh, we may it, right? We trained before, so we're yeah. pretty good buddies. Um, so I was like, you know, is he fighting? And they told me, no, he's out. He's out with injury. I was like, okay, well, let's do it. Uh, it was a tough decision, though, you know. I, I wasn't sure if it was the right decision for me at the time because I was wearing something bigger. Um, and um, my father, my wife, and my coach Bill, they said, go for it, man. You know, opportunities like this doesn't come much, uh, come much around. So we were like, okay, well, let's do it. So I kind of listened to them. I took the opportunity. I went for it. And, um, yeah, so the first fight came in. I wasn't prepared for the first fight. So it was a, it was a tough fight. It was a good fight. I enjoyed it. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then the second time came around, the second season. So I stayed behind in training Vegas after that. And the second season came, and the same thing happened, you know, something different again. I was supposed to fight against Anthony Pettis. One day before, the, you know, he couldn't, uh, he had issues with his weight or something. He got sick. And, um, yeah, I stepped in. And um, Nathan Schultz stepped in as well, so we ended up fighting each other one day notice. So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is it is what it is. Correct. It is what it is. You sound like you have a lot of smart people around you backing you up, which is always great to see from a professional mixed martial artist. Now for you, Alex. So let, let me jump into the Anthony Pettis stuff here. Okay. So you're training, yeah. right? Your first fight happens. It's a very tough freaking fight, man. It's a good fight. You get the win by split decision. You weren't prepared, like you said, as, as well as as much. Uh, you know, obviously, you were an alternate going into that fight, but you managed to get the yeah. win. Now, they tell you Anthony Pettis, and I'm sure, big name, right? We all know who Anthony Pettis is in the MMA world. You're mm -hmm. going into the fight. You're preparing. Again, it's it's all, it's all a mental thing and a physical thing for a fighter. A day before, though, this stuff happens where he pulls out. And I know things happen, right? Things happen for a reason. And that's one thing I've learned. Mm -hmm. But how did you take that? I mean, did it bother you a little bit, Alex? Was it bumming? I mean... How, how was that? Um, well, you know, like, it's like I tell people, like, when they ask me about the opportunity to fight against Anthony Pettis, like, things like that don't come around very often, especially, like, su like such as myself, you know, young young fighter coming up, um, and just to get an opportunity like that. Things like that are, how you say, um, they're, I, I don't know the, what the right word would be, but... One in a million sometimes. When, it's like a one in a million, but uh, it's you know when things like that come out, opportunities like that come out, you take those. You know you don't you don't back away from those, right? So, um, of course, you know I understood that a lot of things can go through the fighting world. So like I'm always psychologically prepared for that. That you know the worst thing can happen, and the worst thing might happen just because you know there is a, it's a possibility. Um, what can go wrong will go wrong, right? That's uh, the saying. So yeah, what can go wrong. And wrong. yeah, and then so. I, I kind of, I wouldn't say I was prepared because I knew it was going to come, but part of me knew that that was a possibility. So when it happened, I was, you know, I told me that, well, we have to make weight, you know, because we were so close. We only were like two pounds off from making weight. So I said, well, let's just make weight and uh, let's be ready to fight tomorrow. Let's see what happens. You know, we know that anything can happen. You know, maybe they have another extra alternate out there laying around that we'll probably have to fight. Um, I wasn't sure. 
So I took that fight and yeah, so then I went, I went down, made weight and I kind of sat around and I was trying to dehydrate, uh, to rehydrate, still waiting to see what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden PFL comes with the offer and hey, would you like to fight Nathan Schulte? Well, that was about an hour after making weight already. And uh, we would like to fight Nathan. Yeah, everything is going like that, man. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's stressful. But, um, you know, that's the life kind of what I signed up for. Yes, and then, um, yeah, so then my dad is trying to help me out. Of course, he's there trying to deal. And, you know, they say, we would like to fight Nathan Schulte. And I'm like, well, I only have two options. You know, either I don't fight and I'm out of the tournament because I only have three points and everybody else has three points. And I don't know what's going to happen the day after. Everybody else can get more points. Or I take the risk and I fight against uh, somebody completely different than what I prepared for. <laughs> And um, and the two-time champion as well um, for the two years. PFL, yeah. And and yeah, and give my shot to actually stay in the tournament. And I say, you know what? I say, well, I got a lot of stuff coming forward for me, and let's go for it. You know, what is there to lose? You know, there's nothing to lose, only ego. And I took it, I went for it, and you know, it turned out very well. It was a great fight, um, very close fight. So I learned a lot from. For myself which is awesome and uh, yeah so yeah i lost my split but at the same time you know he was a two-time champion and i took a lot away from it so definitely you know my dad would always tell me be ready for special be ready for special. yeah <laughs> like, special comes happens it comes and when opportunity comes into your life you better be ready to, to seize it because special doesn't happen a lot and then obviously that's a very special opportunity that you got what did you take away from that uh such a close loss which was you know, I know maybe maybe fighters don't maybe want to hear this, but it was a hell of a fight, man. It was a great fight to watch. You know, Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and I know some people may not want to hear, you know, that from a loss, but it really was, Alex. It was a very entertaining fight. My girlfriend that doesn't watch MMA a lot watched that fight, and she was like, man, that's that's a hell of a fight right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, yeah, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, definitely. But what did you take from that, from that loss like there? What did you learn from that? Because that was a very – it's a, a you fought against a very tough guy, the two-time champ. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, a lot of confidence. I took a lot of confidence out of that. Um, the big part was, so in my first fight against Log Rajabov, yeah. um, I went there with a lot of fear. A fear, not so much of the opponent. I mean, the opponent is just there to do their job, which is the same thing that I want to do. Of course. Uh, which is, you know, win, finish the guy, and come up victorious, get some glory, and, you know, everything that a fighter wants to get, right? Um, so the first fight going into it, I had a lot of uh, a lot of fear going into it, just because one, I, I didn't prepare for the fight, so there was no there was no uh, how you say reliance on training camp. I wasn't sure if I was in shape, you know. I also that's the big thing. It's like you know, will I be able to survive 15 minutes against a guy who's been training over a year for this tournament? So that was my my mind at first. Uh, the second one was level wise, you know, it's the first time me stepping into a big level like that. You know, I mean, I fought in brave. But uh, to go from uh, fighting in Brave, kind of slowly making my way up to all of a sudden be thrown into the top uh, in the highest level of MMA, I would say, because these guys will easily stack up against the top 10, I think, um, in the UFC. You know, that's, that's what people like to compare. So I think these guys will easily be there, you know, around that fifth, top, top 15. Some of these guys top five for sure. I think Nathan Schulte could be a top five easily. Um, I agree. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, you know, I mean, when Anthony Perez got out, he was, I think, top five. So it's it's crazy. So all of a sudden, I go from just coming up the rankings to be put on the highest of the top, which I never got a taste for. And um, when I went into my first fight, like I said, a lot of fear, a lot of, uh, I didn't want to try things because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I wasn't sure if my, uh, my, my cardio was going to last because I wasn't prepared for it. And I wasn't sure how good these guys were too, right? Like it was the first time me actually stepping into that range of, of uh, level. I went through the first fight and I realized, man, this is not so bad. You know, like I can actually stand with these guys. I can take their punch. I got punched hard a few times and I'm like, I can take it. I felt their strength and said, like, I can do it. So now when I went against Satan Schulte, I had a little more confidence. And then um, getting out of that fight, going through all the obstacles from going to Oh, I'm fighting Anthony Perez. So all of a sudden, I'm not fighting Anthony Perez. I'm stepping late notice to kind of fight uh, the Chutan champion. Then I just gain a lot of confidence from it, to be honest. You know, I I, I realize that I have a lot more to offer to the sport than um, than what I even, like, know myself. So then all of a sudden, it, like I say, I just gain a lot of confidence from it. So which is, I think, something that a fighter needs. Oh, uh, de definitely. I mean, from watching that fight, I mean, he couldn't. 
you were defending well and they couldn't submit you. And it's a guy, Nathan Schultz, that, you know, finished at least over one third of his fights by submission. And, you That's know, right. a lot of people, and look, like, you don't need anyone to tell you this. You know, you obviously, you have the mental fortitude. But from people watching that fight, and I heard a lot of people say, man, like, Alex Martinez, you know, about eight, nine fight, you know, professionally, he's there. How many fights does this guy have? 20, 25, you know, fights. On yeah. He looks good. I'm thinking, people were saying, you look really good, like, for the amount of experience, the way you've come up through the sport. And then, like you said, a leap in competition. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Not all the best fighters in the world are in the UFC, and that's what people fail to understand that. Mm -hmm. No, that's right, man. You know, it's it's a, a evolving sport, and you see now even, like, top-level UFC fighters go to other promotions, and they don't do very well. Like, clear example was, you know, Anthony Pettis coming into PFL. And, uh, but a lot of it is also just psychological, right? That's something that people forget sometimes is you can be prepared. Is that This is what I tell people, you know, you can have – you can be the most prepared person. You can have the best car, the fastest car in the world. But if you go there and you're on your phone distracted, you're going to crash no matter how fast you are. You're going to lose the race, right? So it, the same thing is with your body and your skills, right? You can have the best skills. You can be the most prepared guy by one second. They just, I don't know. You just all of a sudden, one second, you look away or you don't think about something else. Somebody's on you, you know? So it's, that's all it takes, man. You know, it's, it, it the errors are just like that, right? You cannot make much of it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. You know, uh, you know, I have a lot of pe friends and you know, family that always tell you, I tell this, this to them. It doesn't matter if you can do the same thing over and over again. If you get it 10 times out of 10, if on the 11th time, that's the one that really matters and you don't do it, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter, man. Yeah. It. It's not. <laughs> and, and it's not yeah. saying that you're bad or anything like that, but it's just saying you got to keep consistency because consistency is the hardest thing to do in life being consistent and that's right that's right and that's where persevering comes in like you know for me like i said i lost my last fight and i just gotta keep on going man you know i gotta keep on going forward and um making sure i keep creating my 11th time you know making sure that uh, that 11th time is there more often so how do i do that by just competing more often definitely now alex let's go to the pfl you made it to the playoffs so congratulations on that obviously that's not the end goal thank you man you. appreciate it the end goal for you is to, to win it all brother and you know you're a very skilled athlete for that PFL number seven, though, August 13th, the rematch against Lloyd. That's right. It's going to be a rematch. It's going to be a good fight. What is it an advantage or a disadvantage, though, that for you going into that fight because you won that fight? <clears throat> um, Man, you know what? Um, everything is for me. I like to see it like that. Everything is for me, not against me. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian, so I believe in God big time. And, um, you know, whether whether it's an uh, advantage or disadvantage, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to always see the positive side of it. Um, I truly believe that it's an advantage in a way because I get to prepare more just because I actually get to have a camp for it. I get to get in shape better. Um, it's, I know what he brings now, which is, you know, the grappling aspect, something that I wasn't 100% prepared for the first one. And, you know, I know how his strikes feels, right? So so, so does he knows my stuff too. But at the same time, like I said, I think I have some uh, some stuff that he hasn't seen yet. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. You know, you get, when you're there, you're fighting. It's all psychological, right? Um, like I said, I like to see everything for me, not against me. So um, I'm, whatever it is, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overcome it somehow. What can fans expect from Alex Martinez on August 13th? I'm coming prepared, man. You know, like I'm... I'm in shape so that's uh i'm gonna fight back every single moment i'm gonna be there i'm gonna push the pace so that's all i can say you know i'm, I'm not gonna quit definitely now uh alex i know that the end game again is for you to win this whole thing no one goes in there saying oh i want to get second or third you want to win the whole thing and of course. what's at stake is of course. the the championship it's a million dollar cash prize so we know that the goal for 2021 is clear you want to win but is there a goal or what's something that you have set as a goal for you in your mixed martial arts career? Is it maybe go to another company? Is it to be a world champion? What can you uh, tell, share one of those goals with you? Yeah. Um, well, you know, there's always been the, how you say, the youth, the youth dream when you're coming up into the sport is a DFC is a big one. Now that I'm signed with PFL, you know, that thought is kind of changing a little more because I'm realizing that PFL is giving me something else that I, I did not see it that the sport had, you know, like PFL is giving me pretty much what I wanted from the beginning. So I'm like, you know what? I think this is it for me. You know, like if PFL wants to keep me around for a while, I'm willing to stay here for a while. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm open. I'm with PFL right now. I'm, I'm loyal. I'm going to stay with them. I'm going to keep competing for them till, till whenever we have to part ways. If we ever have to part ways, who knows, right? Like, I'm still young. PFL is just growing. Um, so it's, you know, we both are just growing right now. So it's, I see a long career here. Um, I want to, I want to keep improving. That's all I can say. I want to keep improving and I want to be the best. I want to be a champion. You know, I'm like I said, I'm still young. I'm 27. I have, you know, my, I'm just entering my prime right now. And, uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's ahead. Like I said, I want to be a champion. I want to conquer PFL and, uh, yeah, that's, that's the goal right now. Be a PFL champion. De definitely now uh last question alex so going into going into this matchup here how, how how's your mentality going into this man are you you're a hundred percent ready to go what's your mentality going into having a lot of a lot of fights through i'm not gonna say a short stretch period of time but a little bit faster than what a lot of fighters normally get yeah, um, my mindset right now is, of course, trying to be a little more aggressive. That's something that I realized that I need to I need to step up a little more when it comes down to aggressiveness. Um, I'm a, such a slow starter when it comes down to fighting, but uh, I need to step up a little more. I need to become a little more aggressive from the beginning because I have, have the cardio, um, you know, and 15 minutes sometimes is not enough for me. I find I kind of need a little bit longer. So I realized that, OK, well, how can I make that longer? Well, I just got to go faster. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah, so. You know, in that sense, I think I'm going to step up a little more and come in, and come in ready, mentally prepare. And um, like I said, the big thing is confidence. You know, I know I belong there now. Um, okay. Now I just have to go. I just got to enjoy, man. That's the big thing. I just got to enjoy it. I I think I missed out a lot on the um, on some parts of my on my first fight, especially because I kind of saw it more as a task than as a man. Now I see as a, I am blessed to do this. You know, not many people can do this for a living. And I seen so many fighters try to do this for a living, but uh, life just didn't give him a break, right? So, and me here now, I have the opportunity to do this for a living, and everything seems to be lining up in in a proper way. Well, we're also working hard for it, but at the same time, you know, things are working now. Life is not really pushing back in that sense, which is good. And I just have to enjoy it, man. You know, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I'm thankful for everything I'm receiving. Now I just have to go and uh, relax, enjoy, and be myself, and uh, fight till the end. Definitely. Now I got one last one, one fun question for you that somebody, somebody, a couple of yeah, people told me to ask. Who says "eso" in your <laughs> corner, brother? Because that's everyone that knows me. I always say "eso" a lot. Yeah, uh, that's my father. My uh, father okay. says that. Yeah. So whenever I land something good, he says "eso." Like uh, it, it's it's such a taekwondo thing when he came from back in the day in competition. Um, so whenever there's something good going on, he says "eso." So then it's it's such a positive reinforcement because you know. Uh, sometimes you're fighting and you're almost like a robot. So um, when you're fighting, you're, you're seeing your opponent and you hit him hard. You know you hit him hard. But in your mind, you try not to think about it. Oh, I hit him hard because it becomes emotional. So you want to stay like a robot till you finish the fight. So when he says, eh, so that's kind of like, okay, good. You know, that was a good hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so. I always tell people that. I always say, like, someone who brings pizza, I'm like, eso, <laughs> right away. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's a cheer. It's like, yay, come on. Yeah, that's what it is, man. My father. Definitely, definitely had to get get that one in there. Alex, is there anything yeah. you want to let the audience know before uh, we sign off here? Um, No, man, you know, like, just tune in on August 13th for PFL. Uh, rematch against Lloyd Rajabov. I'm very excited to put a performance and, you know, I'm coming in ready. Uh, bringing my coaches and yeah man you know i want to say thank you to my family of course my family my friends they support me all the way from back home my wife and um yeah man you know i'm, I'm just excited for what's ahead so I'm let's get excited. it <laughs> I'm very excited to see you do some work man I'm very excited i'm sure the audience is to all the audience thank you for joining us today with another episode of critical condition sports this has been alex martinez professional mixed martial artist for pfl thanks alex for joining us today brother Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hey, and to all your audience, thank you for listening. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.